All right, guys. So remember, we're reading RTI is extra long because we're doing it in place of reading RTI and math RTI. So I'm excited to start reading some of your guys' letters. So I'm just going to read them. I have them up on my screen. If you want to say, like once I'm done, if you want to say, you know, um, it was yours, you're free to. If you don't want to say it's yours, I'm not going to say whose was whose. But once I read a letter, I'm going to ask if there's anything that you really liked about this person's letter, okay? We're not giving negative comments. We're giving positive feedback, okay? So I'm going to start reading. You guys got to be listening, okay? And we're going to be looking for, you know, what did people use the same? You know, did someone pick up certain details? And I'm going to read it in my fun Phoebe voice because I like being Phoebe. So everyone just sit back, relax, and listen. May 10th. 2021. Dear potential lunatic, can you please bring back my mother? I have already called the police. So if you don't bring back my mother, you will go to jail. I know you are one that's hit. I know you are the one that sent the messages. I know you are a kidnapper that kidnapped my mother. I already told the police everything that you did. Stop sending me weird message. I also gave them to the police. I want my mother back because I love her very much. She helps me with things I can't do. Everyone is saying she's not coming back but I know you know where she is. So please bring her back. She is my mother, so she should be with me. Sincerely, Phoebe. Anyone have anything positive they'd like to say about that one? You don't have to. If you don't have anything positive, don't say it. I like how this person threatened that, hey, you're going to jail, because we know you took our mother. So that was a good one. So fabulous, fabulous. That person, that was a good job. All right, moving on to the next one. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, we're not, we're, we're not speaking Spanish today, Landon. Okay. Dear lunatic, I don't know who you think you are, but I'm going to find my mother and bring her home. How dare you drop off mysterious letters and then all of a sudden take my mom. I will be going to the police with these letters in hopes of finding my mom. She wouldn't just up and leave us. When I find my mom, I will find you and you will go to jail. I know I might not have appreciated my mom much, but I love her and I didn't realize how much until she was gone. Please bring my mom back. Sincerely, Furious Phoebe. Ooh. Yes, Molly, that's a good one. It's very confident. And I like how this person talked about how maybe she wasn't so appreciated, you know? And I like the ending with this one, Furious Phoebe. That was cute. Is it nice to say cute? I don't know. Yeah, I like how they said Furious Phoebe. So that was a good one. Both of these so far have been good. That's good. See, you guys were hating on this assignment, but so far they've done good. Um, let's find another one. Dun, dun, dun. Remember, we're not going to read them all. That would probably take a while. <laughs> um, sorry, I'm just finding something to read. Dear lunatic, I'm Phoebe Winterbottom and I know who you are. I have already contacted the police and they are on their way. There is something almost worse, cholesterol. I know that Mrs. Cadaver, I know that you, Mrs. Cadaver, are the lunatic. Why else would my mom contact you? Like your name means dead body. Also, why would you leave right after my mom left? Huh? Sal doesn't understand how serious this is. I don't understand why Sal's dad hangs out with a person whose name is dead body. I know you are the one who was sending messages. I know you kidnapped my mother. Now give her back or I will make you eat cholesterol. Sincerely, Phoebe Winterbottom. Uh -huh. That one's silly because it's talking about cholesterol, you know, because Phoebe just hates cholesterol. She thinks cholesterol is like the worst thing in the world. Is cholesterol the worst thing in the world? Probably not, but hey, Phoebe thinks it is. All right, let's see what's next. Oh, this one's long. Okay. 
Dear Mr. Idiotic, most stupid, meanest, worst man, worst mom kidnapper. I hope you know that I hate your guts. Do you even know how much my mother means to me? I would also like for you to know that the police are involved. Do you even have a mother? I'm guessing not since you thought that you could get away with taking mine. Oh, so sorry, I forgot. But my name is Phoebe Winterbottom and you're going to give me my mother back. I would guess you would know I I would guess Hold on, hold on, time out. I got I got to fix this sentence. My name is Phoebe Winterbottom and you're going to give me my mother back. I would guess you would know since you stole her away from me, but my mother is the most sweetest, kindest, heart-filling person I have ever met and I need her back. Away from the treats, my mother means the world to me. She's done so much for me and now you, a stranger to me, a random person from the streets has her. It would mean a lot, obviously, to give me my mother back. If you could write me a letter back, at least explaining your reasoning let my mother know that i love her and this will end sincerely the daughter of the woman you stole phoebe winterbottom so that one's funny that one called him a lot of names um that was good i like that one that was definitely like okay stop talking in spanish please like it's unnecessary i like that one even though it was only one giant paragraph instead of two paragraphs that's okay um that one definitely sounds more like a teenager writing it. Like, it's super like, um, you stole my mom. Like, what the heck? So that was a good one. Although so far, they've really all been good. So um, let's read this one. Dear lunatic, I need my mom back now. I have no idea who you are. And if my... Okay, I don't know where that fits in. So I'm going to cut out one of these sentences. I need my mom back now. I have no idea who you are. I will have the cops, but first, okay, I'm skipping this one. Because this one's hard to read. I'm skipping it. Sorry if that was yours. You needed some editing. Remember, that was mine and mine horrible. Landon Rebus, that was not yours. Just for the record. I promise, that wasn't yours. Um, You guys have to read things before um you turn things in because some of these like you can tell you never read over them because they're so choppy that's why i'm not i mean i don't think any of them are terrible just for the record i think they're all fun but um i'm not saying who read them or who's wrote them remember so no one knows dear lunatic this is phoebe i'm missing my mother because she is gone I think she has gotten kidnapped from you. If you have my mother, give her back or I will hurt you so bad that you will regret everything you did to her. She did nothing wrong to you, so why did you kidnap her? Who are you? Give my mother back or I will hurt you and get my mother back all by myself. So do it now or I'm coming for you. I want my mother back because I'm selfish and I want her all to myself. She does everything for me. I also love her and she means everything to me. She loves me and takes care of me. If you are the lunatic that stole my mother, give her back or I'm coming for you. So you better watch out. Sincerely, Phoebe. That one's fun. That one makes Phoebe sound way more like aggressive than what she seems in the book. This person made it seem like, um, excuse me, I will beat you up. Even though Phoebe doesn't really seem like the violent type. So that was yours, Paisley. So that was good. Thank you, Paisley. All right. Who's next? Well, you don't know. Ha <laughs> ha. All right, Jameson, I already said to stop typing in Spanish, okay? I'm not going to ask you guys again. That's unnecessary. We're not just typing random things. All right, this is a long one. We're ready. Dear lunatic, my name is Phoebe Winterbottom, and I demand my mother back. I have already contacted the police and they have sent a search party. I have found suspicious hair strands that are probably yours from when you kidnapped my mother. And I have found a potential blood spot also from when you kidnapped my mother. I know people say my imagination is like a wild goose, but I am for sure you have my mother. You probably have her chained to a wall in a dungeon. My mother found 
some time right before you snatch her to make some cholesterol-free meals, but those will only last so long. And with my mother gone, I am being forced to eat food from neighbors and friends and family, which I have to throw out the window because of the cholesterol and those terrifying meals. Have you ever heard what cholesterol can do to you and your body? It only happens in my nightmares. I know for a fact that you have been working with Mrs. Cadaver. You probably helped her chop up her husband and bury him. Maybe you have kidnapped my mother for her extraordinary cooking. If you want cholesterol-free meals, ask your own mother. She'll probably agree to make a few meals. Have you ever heard of Pandora's box? She was a gift from God to men. They gave her a present that she couldn't open. Then one day, she, her curiosity got the best of her, and she opened it. And all the evil and bad things in the world flew out. I bet things like cholesterol were in that box. My mother wrote letters for my very strong dad, who could find you and free my mother any day, and my sister and me. I need my mother back immediately before my entire family falls apart into a cholesterol nightmare. Thank you for taking the time to read my letter, and if you don't return my mother, I hope all the cholesterol demons come and bury them inside your body, and you suffer from cholesterol for the rest of your hopeless life. Sincerely, Phoebe Winterbottom. That one's so silly. I love that I love, one. I love the last part. Yeah, so funny. That one's so funny how it's saying the cholesterol demons. She's like, hey, if you want some cholesterol-free meals, ask your own mom. Why do you have to take my mom? So that one was super great. I love it. And that used, this person used a lot of information from our story, talked about the hair strands, the blood stains, obviously talked about the cholesterol. So that was a really good one. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. And you can really tell that one like literally sounded like Phoebe because, you know, Phoebe's kind of a little bit of a selfish person. Like she literally was saying like, hey, I need my mother back for me. And that's how this letter was. It was like, yeah, I need her for me. Not because I'm scared of what's happening to her, but because like, hello, I need my mom. So that was great. Um, Let's try this one. Dear potential lunatic, my name is Phoebe Winterbottom. I just know that you kidnapped my mom. I also know that you keep sending my family letters. You must bring her back. I am not worried. I just need her back. I know you took her because she left her favorite blouse, which she would not do. My father thinks I'm crazy and said that you did not take her, but I know you did. He said that she would have would not have time to write us and package meals for us. But like I said, I know you kidnapped. I have also contacted the police. They did not believe me. My father thinks that she just left, but she loves me and would not leave me. My classmates believe my mother is on a business trip. I'm not imagining this, and I know you took her, and I am also not fine. More evidence that you took her is the weird hair strands I found in my house and the potential blood spots I found and marked with adhesive, and marked with adhesive tape. But my father removed it. If you do not give her back, I will contact the police again. You must give her back. Sincerely. Phoebe Winterbottom. This one used a lot of information from the book too. It's talking about the favorite blouse. It's talking about the adhesive tape. It's also talking about how no one believes her. So that was a good one too. Actually, they've really all been good. I shouldn't say this was a good one too because really they've all been super good. Yes, that was yours, Olivia. Good job. Um... Evan, I'm not sure you need more, bud. And don't do it right now. You can do it later. Since you weren't here yesterday. All right, let's try this one. Yeah, I'm just picking random people. I'm just going through my list. All right. Dear the potential lunatic, just to let you know, the police know about you and they know that you took my mom. I think you should give, you should just give me back my mom unless you want to have to deal with the police. So just give her back. The police know about you. Like I said, they are coming to get you. So you should just give back my mom. In the middle of the night, the police will come and get you. So just give back my mom. This is why you should give my mother back. One, I need her. I need her to make breakfast, lunch, and dinner for us. Mostly dinner because when my sister or my dad makes dinner, it's not like my mom's cooking at all. 
I love my mom's cooking and I miss her homemade dinners. She makes the best dinners of all times. Two, another reason that I need to meet my mom is because she helps me a lot. She makes my lunches for school and helps me get ready for school. She also helps me with school. When I ask for help with my homework, she just gives me answers. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> just gives me answers. <laughs> Dad makes me do my homework by myself. It's not the same. If you do not get my mother back, my whole family is going to fall apart. If you do not get my mother back, do you want me? Do you want to give back? Do you want to give me back my mom? Because if you do not give me back my mom, the police will come and get you. Um, just so you know, just so you know, I know that you took my mom and I have proof. So please give me back my mom. All you have to do is return my mom, then everything will be okay. And the police will stop looking for you and my family. And I will stop writing letters to you and we will leave you alone. All you have to do is return my mother. How would you like me to take your mother? How would that make you feel? So just give me back my mom. You got my whole family worried sick about my mom. We can barely live one more day without her. She does everything for us. Our family is falling apart and we need her. I have never seen my dad cry before. And I have seen him cry a lot. Like a lot. He's been bawling my eyes out his eyes out. I cannot stand one more day without her. We need her back. So do, so if you do not give her back, I will get the FBI in on what you're doing by taking my mother. So do you think this is enough to give me back my mother? If not, then you need to rethink taking my mother away. I'm afraid that if you don't, do not give her back, our whole family is going to fall apart. This is why you should give back my mother. That was a long one. That one was really serious. Like the person just kept on repeating himself, like, hey, give me back my mom. Like she didn't want the lunatic to forget why she was writing this letter. She wanted her to say, give me back my mom. Give me back my mom. Give me back my mom. Because so obviously she wants her to have her mother back, which, hey, you know, like she, this person was really serious. Like give me back her, my mom. So that was like a serious person. All right. We got a few. I'm going to read a few more and then we will hop on to reading. All right. Dear lunatic, I'm going to call the police if you don't give my mother back. Don't chop her into pieces. I want her alive and well when you return her. I know Mrs. Cadaver kidnapped her too. It's super obvious. I love my mom so much and I miss her. I would do anything for her. I wish I could have at least told her all of that before you took her. All I'm saying is that I want her back. Also, I went to the police station and they didn't believe me that you are a criminal. I'm going to try again some other day. If you... Tell me you aren't going to give her back. My dad cried when I went to the police station and he had to pick me up. I think it was going, I think it was because he missed her so much. I don't know why you kidnapped her, but I'm going to get to the bottom of it. I like that one. That one's trying to say like, I don't know why you did it, but I'm going to find out why. Not just give her back, but hey, we're going to figure it all out. <sighs> Dear lunatic, lunatic. I want my mother back. She was a great woman. We know who you are. The police know who you are. So give up and give me my mother. You will be arrested and you will be sent to jail if you do not release her. We know you took her, so give her back or you will regret it. The police will sentence you for life in prison. My mother is a great woman. She helped me with fixing stuff. My mother was the best she could. She was the best mother in the world. We will get you no matter what, you lunatic. We will get my mother. My mother is the best, most helping mother ever. She would help me with anything. So apparently life in prison, that's serious. I don't really think you get life in prison for kidnapping someone, but I mean, it's obviously not nice to kidnap people. Um, so... I don't know how many we read, but all of those are really, all the ones I read were really good. Like I said, I don't have time to read them all. I will get those graded to you sometimes today, but you guys really did a good job. Lots of you were super creative. I loved that you guys actually used details from the story. Some of you guys need to work on your letter format. Um, maybe I should pull that up real quick. Let me pull up letter format. <laughs> Let's talk about how we write a letter. Real quick. Time out. I just don't have time to read them all. We should probably go through. Yeah, I don't really know how all that stuff works. 
Okay, so here's my blank Google Doc that I'm about to share with you. And lots of you wrote your, like started your letter wrong. So let's, I'll, we'll just go through a quick letter making tips. So next time, is it gonna share? Next time you write a letter, you go up here. Let me, let me zoom in so you guys can see. The first thing you have to do is go up here and you have to put it on the left. And that's how you write your date. Your, I mean, on the right, your date should be on the right. So today is May 11th, 21. Then you press enter and then you go back to the other side, the left side. And here is where you say, dear lunatic comma. Some of you put dear comma, then the person's name. Some of you guys put deer, uh, then the date. The date is higher than the deer. Uh, then you would press enter probably twice, tab in, type stuff, blah, blah, you know. So here's all your writing. Uh, then at the very end, you would put sincerely. Uh, then you'd enter again, Mrs. Kneifel, okay? So the date is at the very top of the page on the right side, okay? Then it's dear whoever on the left side. The date and the dear whoever should not be on the same line. There should be an enter in between them, one up here and one a little bit lower. And then it's dear name, then comma, okay? And same with the sincerely. It could be, you know, yours truly, sincerely, love, whatever. The word comma, and then the name underneath, okay? So that's a mini lesson on how to write a letter. Are there any questions on letter formatting? Obviously in the middle here would be where you actually write the letter. Yeah, I know I just wrote today's date, but I'm just, I am not worried about what the date actually is. I'm just worried about how you write the date. Cause some of you guys put the date and the lunatic on the same line. And um, really, the only, I haven't graded your guys' um, letters, obviously. The only reason you're probably going to miss points is if you did not format it right. Because some of you guys didn't even put an ending and stuff like that, which is, I mean, you're just going to lose like a point or two. Nothing, nothing crazy. But anyways, there's that. So any questions about anything before we move? You don't have to put the address in the letter. No, you don't. You do not have to put a return address on a letter. You can leave your address off a letter. You never have to put your return address on a letter. You have to send it to someone with an address, but you don't have to put your address on it. And also my thoughts were, I guess I don't know if I ever explained this. Obviously we don't know where the lunatic lives. So if I was Phoebe, I would just leave it maybe taped to my door or on, you know, in an envelope on my front step because that's where she's been getting her letters. So then the lunatic can pick it up when he leaves the next one. But no, you do not have to put your address on a letter, Evan. You can. It's called a return address, but you do not have to. Yes, Paisley, it's fine that you wrote in lobster. Landon, can you please put your water bottle down? So it looks like you're in a fishbowl. All right, friends, are we ready to get started with a little bit more reading? Okay, Evan, we're not trying to hide who we are. Like everyone said sincerely Phoebe or whatever Phoebe. Phoebe's not trying to hide that she's Phoebe. So it would be fine if someone looked at the envelope. Because Phoebe's not trying to hide herself. Okay, well, the police already aren't taking her seriously. So the odds of police... We already read the chapters when Phoebe gave them the stuff to analyze and the police weren't taking her seriously. Lots of people highlighted that in the letters. All right, next is 31, the photograph. But let's review what we just said. Remember, they broke into Mrs. Cadaver's house. Like, yeah, that's not a good idea. Um, and remember, they Mrs. Cadaver left, but they completely forgot about Mrs. Partridge who lives there. Remember, she's blind. Yeah, Phoebe is a little bit weird. She's a little bit eccentric. So, um, remember, there's all this interesting stuff in Mrs. Cadaver's house, like a sword and, like, masks, and, you know, they're, like, real serious, like, oh, my gosh, she obviously killed my mom with a sword. Like, why, why would she kill someone with a sword? That's just a bit much. 
But anyway, so don't break into people's houses. 31, the photograph, 198. The next day was the most peculiar, as Mrs. Partridge would say. Phoebe arrived at school with another message, which he had found on her porch in the morning. We never know the worth of water until the well is dry. It's a clue, Phoebe said. Maybe my mother is hidden in a well. I walked straight to Ben. I walked straight into Ben when I went to my locker. That grapefruit aroma was in the air. You've got something on your face, he said. With soft, warm fingers, he rubbed the side of my face. It's probably your breakfast. I don't know what had come over me. I was going to kiss him. I just leaned forward as just as he turned around and slammed the door of his locker. My lips ended up pressing against the cold metal locker. You're weird, Sal, he said. Kissing is triumphantly complicated. So I remember every time like Ben tries to kiss her, he like kissed her collarbone and like the side of her head. And now she accidentally just kissed the locker. Like they're just apparently not meant to kiss. I don't know. Super silly. Both people have to be in the same place at the same time. And both people have to remain still so that the kiss ended up in the right place. But I was relieved that my lips ended up on the cold metal locker. I could not imagine what had come over me or what might have happened if the kiss had landed on Ben's mouth. It was a shivery thing to consider. I made it through the rest of classes without losing control of my lips. Mr. Berkway sailed into class carrying our journals. I had forgotten all about them. He was leaping all over the place, exclaiming, dynamite, unbelievable, incredible. He said he couldn't wait to share the journals with the class. Mary Lou Finney said, share with the class? Mr. Berkeley said, not to worry. Everyone has something magnificent to say. I have not read through every page yet, but I wanted to share some of these passages with you right away. Um, why do you think someone might be nervous? Someone raise their hand and then think like, why would they be read aloud? Olivia? Because they might have wrote something that they didn't want anyone to like hear or personal stuff. Right, personal stuff. Because remember, they wrote these throughout the whole summer and they just thought they were for themselves. And then Mr. Berkway collected them. And when he first collected them a few pages, well, a couple chapters ago, everyone was like, oh, you're keeping them? And now he's going to read them out loud. So they're probably all like, oh, snap. Like, what if they wrote about their friends or, you know, personal things? Like, who knows what they wrote about? So um, they're probably all a little bit nervous. People were squirming all over the room. I was trying to remember what I had written. Mary Lou leaned over to me and said, well, I'm not worried. I wrote a special note in the front of mine, distinctively asking him not to read it. Mine was private. Mr. Berkway smiled at each nervous face. You needn't worry, he said. I'll change any names that you use and I'll fold this piece of yellow paper over the cover of whichever journal I'm reading so that you won't know whose is whose. I mean, okay. So kind of like what we just did, except for these le the letters I just read weren't any personal information, right? Those had nothing to do with you. They only had to do with our book. So nothing in here is personal. Nothing, none of the things I just read for you were personal, but he's going to change names, you know, and he's going to put a cover over it so no one can see. So like, that's like a pretty good thing. But still, if there's private information, even if you don't, we don't know who it is, what if their face turns red or something like that. So still, uh -huh. Sorry, I'm yawning. Ben asked if he could go to the bathroom. Christy said she felt sick and begged to see the nurse. Phoebe asked me to touch her forehead because she was pretty sure she had a fever. Usually Mr. Berkway would let people go to the bathroom or the nurse, but this time he said, let's not malinger. Remember, malinger is when you're pretending to be sick to get out of something. He picked up a journal, slipping the yellow paper over it before anyone had a chance to examine the cover for clues as to its author's identity. Everyone took a deep breath. You could see people's poise nervously, waiting as tensely as if Mr. Berkway was going to announce someone's execution. Mr. Berkway read, I think that Betty, he changed the name, you could tell because there was no Betty in our school, will go to H-E-L-L -L because she always takes the Lord's name in vain. She says God every five seconds. Mary Lou Finney was turning purple. Who wrote that? She said. Did you, Christy? I bet you did. Christy.
Christy stared down at her desk. I do not say God every five seconds. I do not. And I'm not going to H-E-L-L. I'm nimpet. That's what I say now. I say I'm nimpet and alpha and omega. All right. So Mr. Berkway said Betty and he did not say who wrote it. But within seconds, were they able to find out who wrote what and who it was about? Yeah, so even though he changed names, now Mary Lou's embarrassed, and so is um, Christy. They're both embarrassed, and, like, that's no fun. They both know. So even though he changed names, like, neither of them are happy about the situation. Mr. Berkway was desperately trying to explain what he had enjoyed about this passage. He said that most of us are not aware that we might be using the words such as God that offended people. Mary Lou leaned over to me and said, is he serious? Does he actually really and truly believe that beef brain Christie is troubled by me saying God, which I do not, by the way, say anymore anyways? Christy wrote, wore a poised look as if God himself had just come down from heaven and sit on her desk. Mr. Berkway quickly, quickly selected another journal. He read, Linda, there was no Linda in our class either, is my best friend. I tell her just about everything and she tells me everything, even things I do not want to know, like what she ate for breakfast or what her father wears to bed or how much her new sweater costs. Sometimes things like that are just not interesting. Mr. Berkway liked this passage because it shows that even though someone might be a best friend, he or she could still drive us crazy. Beth Ann turned all the way around in her seat and sent wicked eyebrow messages to Mary Lou. Mr. Berkway flipped ahead in the same journal to another passage. He read, I think Jeremiah is pigheaded. His skin is always pink and his hair is always clean and shiny, but he is really a jerk. I thought Mary Lou Finney was going to fall out of her chair. Alex was bright red, or was bright, bright pink. He looked at Mary Lou as if she had recently plunged a red hot steak in his heart. Mary Lou said, no, I, no, it isn't what you think. I, Mr. Berkway liked this passage because it showed conflicting feelings about someone. Once again, he's not saying the names, but do they know who's about or who wrote it? Yeah, so Mary Lou apparently wrote that she thinks Jeremiah, who's really Alex, is pig-headed. But since she wrote this this summer, remember her and Alex went on a date. Is it true, or has it ever happened to you that you feel one way about someone one day, and then, like, in a few weeks, maybe you become friends? Like, you know, lots of times people change their minds, or maybe you're upset with someone one day. Like, you're mad at someone, so you write this down one day, and then you're over it the next day. Like, that's a natural thing to happen. So they wrote these journals in the summer. Okay, well, now it's like the middle of school, and now these are being read. So poor, poor Alex feels bad because Mary Lou thinks he's pigheaded, even though she wrote this a long time ago. I'll say it does, Alex said. The bell rang. First, you could hear sighs of relief for the people whose journals had not been read. And then people started talking a mile a minute. Hey, Mary Lou, look at Alex's pink skin. And hey, Mary Lou, does Beth Ann's father, what does Beth Ann's father wear to bed? Beth Ann was standing one inch away from Mary Lou's face. I do not talk on and on, Beth Ann said. And it wasn't very nice of you to mention that. And I do not tell you everything. And the only reason I ever mentioned what my father wore to bed was because we were talking, if you will remember, about men's bathing suits being more comfortable than women's. And... On and on she went. Mary Lou was trying to get across the room to Alex, who was standing there as pink as can be. Alex, she called, wait, I wrote that before. Wait. See, she wrote that a long time ago before they, you know, started to like, like each other. Because they went on a date, you know. It was a jing bang of a mess. I was glad I had to get, I had to get out of there. Phoebe and I were going back to the police station. We got into Sergeant, we got in to see Sergeant Bickle right away. Phoebe slapped the newest message about the water in the well on his desk, dumped the hairs which she had collected from Mrs. Cadaver's house on top of the message, then placed her list of further items to investigate on top of that. Sergeant Bickle frowned. I don't think you girls understand. Phoebe went into a rage. You idiot, she said. She scooped at the messages and hairs and list and stormed out of the office. I don't think we're supposed to call police officers idiots, so that's not very nice. Sergeant Bickle followed her while I waited, thinking he would bring Phoebe back and calm her down. I looked at the photographs at, on his desk, the ones I had not been able to see the day before. 
in one of Sergeant Bickles, a friendly looking woman, his wife, I suppose. The second picture was a shiny black car. The third picture was of Sergeant Bickle, the woman, and a young man, their son, I figured. I looked closer. I recognized the son. It was the lunatic. Oh, snap. All right, so the person who had originally knocked on Phoebe's door to ask for Mrs. Winterbottom, the young man, the one they'd seen in the grocery store, the one had been coming at them on the sidewalk, apparently is in a picture on Sergeant Bickle's desk. So now we have to ask ourselves, why the heck is Sergeant Bickle's son, we're assuming, because he's in a picture on his desk, looking for Phoebe's mom? Why was he staring at them when they were in the gas station? Like, what, what the heck? So you are going to answer me a Google Classroom question. I will share it with you momentarily once I get my computer to share. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, assault is when you hit someone. Calling someone an idiot is not assault. Okay, let me share my screen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's not what I wanted. Sorry. What are you guys saying in the chat? It does end at 920 today. Okay. So you're going to answer a question. Well, not really a question. You're making a prediction. It says, oh, dang. That did not work. It says, make a prediction. What is going to happen next now that Sal just saw the picture of the lunatic on Sergeant Bickle's desk? Is she going to tell Phoebe? Is she going to confront the sergeant? Is she going to go, you know, find out where the lunatic is now? You're going to make a prediction. Remember, a prediction is what you think is going to happen next. So you must use capital letters punctuation and complete sentences you must write how about as much as possible for your prediction okay how do you spell prediction no idea all right i just want to know what your prediction is okay it's going to be due tomorrow because you have 20 minutes to uh, write this. If you happen to finish before reading RTI is up, you can, of course, work on your read works that is due. About half of you got it done, but the other half of you didn't. Okay, so I want to know your prediction, okay? Just write as much as you want to say about your prediction. That being said, if you write me like two words, probably not going to be enough, okay? I want a legitimate, personal best, like what do you think is going to happen next? When you finish, finish your read works. If you're already done with your read works, once you finish this, you may read a book for AR. Remember, you have till the 19th to earn all 20 of your AR points. So long, farewell. I can't wait to hear what you guys think is going to happen next. I'm pumped to read these. See you later. Logan, why are you saying why? Bye, Olivia. Bye, goodbye, goodbye.